Good morning, everyone. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. My name is Robert Carl with the Brick Township MUA. My job there is basically to uh, manage the drinking water supply. For those of you who don't know, uh, the Brick MUA um, provides drinking water to more than 100,000 people in Brick Township and surrounding communities, including uh, Howell Township, uh, Point Pleasant Beach, and Point Pleasant Borough. We have a 16 million gallon per day water treatment plant and a, a diverse portfolio of water supply sources, um, which include the Matitaconk River, um, the Brick Reservoir, and a series of wells. Uh, but the Matitaconk River uh, serves as our, as our primary drinking water supply source. Uh, it supplies about 70% of our drinking water supply on average, and it's also used to fill the Brick Reservoir. Um, Here's just a, 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 a map of, of where uh, the Matitaconk and Brick MUA are in, 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 re, in um, relation to the larger Barnegat Bay watershed. And you'll see in the, uh, the, the map on the right, very little of uh, the Matitaconk watershed lies in Brick Township. So we've, have to, we've had to engage the upstream communities quite a bit through the years for uh, the purpose of water supply and watershed protection. Um, over the course of about two decades, we had done a lot of monitoring, done a lot of studies, um, and, and all that really culminated in 2013 when we completed the, the Matitaconk River Watership Protection and Restoration Plan. The, the main goals of that plan are to preserve the Matitaconk River as a healthy and sustainable water supply for the region, to restore and protect the Barnegat Bay estuary, and to eliminate water quality impairments, address TMDLs, and attain compliance with the surface water quality standards throughout the watershed. Uh, our Matiakau water, River Watership Plan covers 90 square miles and seven municipalities in both Monmouth and Ocean Counties. Um, the, the planning process uh, was guided by a diverse uh, and, and representative stakeholder uh, advisory committee. And the end result of that is that the plan is built on consensus and is broadly supported. Um, ultimately, this plan is a strategy for the long-term uh, protection and restoration of the Matiakau River and it includes a prioritized list of, of actions and projects that can be implemented by anyone. Um, the plan is not brick any ways, it's everyone's plan. So the, the watershed plan is a pretty hefty document, um, uh, but in a nutshell, what it does is it evaluates watershed conditions. We looked at water quality, we looked at land use, and we looked at uh, water quantity. When I say water quantity, I talk about hydrology and stream flow changes, but also human use. Uh, the plan looks at all the existing TMD, TMDLs that are already in place in the Matitaconk. Um, there are fecal coliform TMDLs for both the river and streams, as well as lakes. There's a phosphorus TMDL already in place in the North Branch. Uh, there's a total coliform TMDL for the brackish water portion of the Matitaconk that is uh, geared towards sh uh, shellfish. And then there's also a mercury TMDL, which has to do with fish tissue and it's uh, the result of air de deposition. Um, the plan assesses pollutant sources and establishes loading estimates, and we focus primarily on uh, pathogens, i.e. Uh, fecal coliform and E. coli. Um, we, we focus on nutrients, nitrogen and phosphorus, and total suspended solids. Uh, in the plan, we calculate load reductions required to meet the New Jersey surface water quality standards, which are ultimately rooted in the Clean Water Act. Um, the plan identifies management strategies to achieve these load reductions and presents an implementation program. So we completed the plan in 2013. We've been working on implementation for about 10 years now. And uh, some relevant findings from the, from the plan really just uh, that are, you know, relevant to today's discussion is that uh, the Matitaconk is a, it continues to be a very uh, healthy and high quality water supply source for brick MUA. That's good for us. Um, but we found the stormwater really is the biggest contributor to uh, water quality and stream flow problems. And uh, many water quality parameters, including nitrogen, um, show increases both over time and with distance downstream. And you can see uh, both of these figures come from the watershed plan. You can see as you move on the, the, on the right-hand side, uh, the chart, as you move downstream, we can see nitrogen increase. Um, and the uh, map on the left shows um, nitrogen loading areas uh, within the watershed. And if you compare that to land use and land cover, you can see it aligns very well with impervious surfaces. And that is roads, driveways, parking lots, uh, sometimes lawns that are compacted that aren't allowing water to infiltrate. So really it's, it's those more heavily developed areas that are contributing the nitrogen loading. So um, in terms of plan implementation, um, you know, stormwater being the biggest component uh, or um, factor we need to, to work on, it kind of falls into two bins. It, it falls into uh, new development, 
and existing development. So in terms of new development, we're fortunate in New Jersey that New Jersey has very good stormwater management regulations. Um, and basically, uh, new developments are required to meet standards for uh, water quality, water quantity, and groundwater recharge. The biggest uh, priority project that came out of the watershed plan was the development of a low impact development ordinance. And we collaborated, uh, Berkeley and a consultant collaborated extensively with DEP in developing this model stormwater management ordinance. And what we wanted to do is really um, have what's called green, green stormwater infrastructure added uh, as a requirement um, to within these, you know, as a stormwater ordinance for the for the town through the model ordinance. Um, ultimately, the key concept uh, that green stormwater infrastructure was um, adopted statewide in the stormwater management regulations that became effective March in March 21. So the work we had intended for the Matitagon, that, that real, that key concept of green infrastructure was applied statewide, um, which I think is a great success. And for those who don't know, green infrastructure is, is really small stormwater management measures or BMPs that are distributed throughout the site. So rather than have a, a basin at the end of the pipe, at the end of the site where that treats everything, you have smaller BMPs like rain gardens or tree filter boxes that are distributed throughout the site. And ultimately, it's more effective to treat the, the water near the source than it is to work, uh, you know, treat at the end of the pipe at the right before it's discharged off the site. So th th that was the, the new development bin. The other bin is existing development. And that, this one's a little more difficult. There's, there's countless basins and, and direct stormwater outfalls where the water runs off the road into a storm gate and right to the nearest stream. The map on the right shows all the direct discharge outfalls we identified in the Matitagoc, and I can guarantee you that's not all of them. Um, but that was, that's what we had identified dur uh, during in the, um, when the watershed plan was being put together. Um, so I, I wanted to walk through briefly some of the implementation projects we've, we've done, um, both uh, Brick MUA and partners, to deal with um, antiquated stormwater management. Uh, the first project we undertook was in Moses Mills Drive, uh, sorry, on Moses Mills Drive in Howell Township. It was a project we did in partnership with Howell. Um, here we had a, a huge traditional detention basin. The water comes in one side, races down that low flow, to, low flow channel, and right out the other side. Does nothing for water quality and really was just designed for uh, flow control. Um, what we did was we eliminated that low flow channel. We broke up the soils and compaction. We added some soil amendments um, to, and, and added, a, added a whole lot of plantings. And an end result looks like that. So now the water comes in one side. Uh, there's a lot of groundwater recharge that occurs. Uh, the plants uh, serve as filters, and we, uh, you know, we, moder we made minor modifications to the outlet structure to hold the water there a little bit longer, so there's more filtering action. Um, but I think this is a pretty successful project. Yeah, on that Moses Mulch Drive, uh, we found there was one outfall, I'm uh, sorry, one um, storm inlet that, that actually didn't lead to the, that basin. It, it, it discharged right to a stream uh, nearby, and so we didn't want to leave that one. Um, unaddressed. So what we did in this case uh, was we notched the curb on either side of this inlet and we, we constructed a, a bioretention trench on either side. And essentially what happens now, the water runs down the curb, it runs into this infiltration trench, there's uh, plantings in this trench uh, with an underdrain. So the, that water is infiltrated, it it ends up, goes into the underdrain, ends up right in the pipe it would have when in otherwise. In bigger storm events, when this thing overflows, the water will back up into the street and go right down the storm grate where, where it would have got to begin with. Um, but what we've done is effectively captured that first flush of, uh, of runoff, which usually carries the highest amount of pollutants. We did some work with Lakewood Township at Lake Carasaljo Park. Uh, around Lake Carasaljo um, and, and the adjoining park, there are dozens of stormwater outfalls that go right from the, uh, sorry, I'm sorry, stormwater inlets go right from the street, right into the, directly into the lake or the river. And what we did was something similar to that, that second piece of Moses Milch is we constructed rain gardens, and this is a before and after, again, before and after, and the mechanism is the same. Basically, the water is filtered by these plantings before it's discharged to the, to the stream. We had an opportunity to work with Federal Realty Investment Trust at Brick Plaza. We wanted to look at, uh, you know, commercial uh, plaza and, and demonstrate some of the things that can be done there. Um, one of the things we did was we took these, um, you know, raised uh, traffic islands and flipped them upside down. 
and turned them into rain gardens. Basically, we just excavated them, notched the curb, and now they serve as a sink for stormwater. And, you know, again, the principle is the same, groundwater recharge filtration. Uh, there were other things that were done at Brick Plaza. Um, during their renovations, they added a bunch of uh, porous pavement to areas where they could, where the water actually sinks right through the pavement, um, you know, where there's not a lot of uh, heavy traffic load. Um, Federal Realty was, um, they kind of ran with this project when we were done with it. They really liked the results. And you can see they, they've, they've installed more rain gardens all over the place. And you can see they are aesthetically, they look great, you know. So not only are they, are they uh, improving water quality, but they look good too for, for people or the shoppers and, and customers that come there. Um, we're not the only ones doing this kind of work. Um, um, the American Literal Society and the Barnaby Bay Partnership did some work at Ocean County Park. Um, at the park, they installed some tree filter boxes, and these tree filter boxes, uh, kind of the same principle, the water enters, it goes through the, the growing medium for the trees, and it's filtered and recharges into the ground. Um, there was some stream bank restoration, there were some uh, living shorelines, and they actually uh, installed a floating wetland island. And the whole point of that island is it's, it's, a, it's a floating wetland, it sits on pontoons, and it, uh, it's planted, and, and it, it's, it's a purpose to absorb nutrients. And that's still out there. George and Port University did uh, some work on um, subsurface gravel wetlands. It's a type of, of stormwater best management practice that is particularly effective at removing nitrogen. So they uh, installed four of these in conjunction with the Rutgers Cooperative Extension. And they had the students involved in testing them and, and, and went on. They're still in existence over there. Uh, the Rutgers Cooperative Extension just this past summer did a project with Jackson Township, and it's similar to our Moses Milch Basin. You can see a before and after picture. They took a traditional detention basin and again turned it into a bioretention basin. Um, so now where you had no water quality improvement, there is some. Um, and and uh, with the funding they had available, they actually were, were able to complete a, a design for another project at a nearby park called Woodland Park. There's a parking area where the runoff runs right into the river. So they have a design shovel ready. Uh, uh, to basically uh, filter that stormwater as it runs off the parking lot before it hits the North Branch Matitaconk River. So, uh, you know, getting away from stormwater now, there are other measures that are important. Um, uh, high density septic areas are uh, problematic, particularly for nitrogen. And there were some high density septic areas in the Matitaconk watershed that were identified in the plan. Howell Township uh, spearheaded a project to address one of these problematic areas in its in its jurisdiction and extend sewer service and uh, I, I understand that particular area was was problematic or a lot of failing septic systems so um, this is another type of project um, that will definitely improve water quality uh, education outreach that's a huge component of the watershed plan I think is probably the most important component of the watershed plan you know ba basically engaging the community and building uh, awareness and stewardship for local water resources. We actually have a person dedicated almost full time to going out and, and talking to students and civic groups, uh, attending, uh, you know, putting out workshops, attending, um, you know, uh, uh, different functions with exhibits, and to really engaging the community to, you know, to discuss uh, primarily non-point source pollution, stormwater management, and water conservation. And for those who are interested, that uh, that link there, www.matitaconkriver.org is the link where you could get to the watershed plan if you're interested in seeing it in more detail. Water quality monitoring is, was actually really critical too. We have a, a database that goes back to 1998. It's uh, probably slightly after, um, that, that's the data we find it, are, are very reliable. It's been QA'd, or, you know, the, the, it's been uh, looked at and examined for water quality. Uh, that data were, uh, or, and the database was really important as we put together the watershed plan. We had some data to look at. We could look at a baseline, and it helped us uh, not only decide or figure out what the status was, but you know where we need to go later. And it actually helps us as we continue to collect data um, to evaluate how we're doing in terms of plan implementation. You know, are we really seeing benefits? Um, we have a, a state certified lab on site, which makes it easier for us, in particular, to collect the, the amount of data that we do. And we do submit our data regularly to uh, DEP, so it's accessible to the public. Uh, for different types of projects. Other types of plan impl implementation strategies that um, are relevant to uh, nitrogen is open space preservation. Some of these we heard about earlier. 
Um, protection and restoration of uh, riparian areas, those are the areas that are uh, located directly along the stream banks. That picture on the bottom left, that's not what you want to see when, when you see a stream, you know, it's basically mowed to the edge. Uh, we want to see a nice, you know, wooded uh, or at least uh, an area of vegetation along there to serve as a buffer, a filtering buffer. Um, agricultural best management practices, basically uh, keeping ac agricultural activities from affecting nearby water uh, resources. Um, lake management is an important strategy, you know, uh, looking at, at, at lakes and, and maintaining a healthy water quality within the lakes and water conservation, both indoor and outdoor. When I say outdoor, I'm really talking about landscaping irrigation. So those are all important strategies and actions. So, um, you know, right now, Brickett Utility is working on another grant funded uh, project with DEP. Uh, in that project, we're looking at uh, tracking the sources of fecal coliform in the North Branch Petitconk River, um, addressing that uh, that fecal TMDL I mentioned earlier. Uh, we're, we're doing some additional detention base and retrofits with Howell Township, and we're working with Lakewood Township to install some some of those smaller green stormwater infrastructure measures in downtown Lakewood. And we're also looking at uh, some sort of end of pipe treatment or the feasibility of some sort of end of pipe treatment at the largest outfall in the watershed, which I could probably almost stand up in. It's an enormous uh, discharge pipe into the North Branch. Um, but in the end, you know, the various watershed initiatives uh, we, we've talked about that are already underway and are continuing will help reduce uh, nitrogen nutrient loading and help address the new TMDL. Um, Brick Utilities and its partners are, are leveraging funding sources to, to get these projects done. And we are continually learning uh, more cost effective ways to do this. So basically, as we get funding to make that stretch that, that funding and make it go a little further. And I just wanted to close and say, you know, we're really fortunate to be here in the Barnum Bay region with excellent resources and committed stakeholders and partners for to support watershed protection. So I think we are in a really good place. So uh, there's my contact information. I'd have to be happy to answer any questions anyone might have. We're good? All right, thank you.